Will he be able to read the number on the way down? Great. Jesse, did you see any numbers on this way? Yeah, 56. 56, all right, let's verify this. Okay, the number that was actually presented was a five and a zero, 50. The zero happens to look a lot like a six. So what this means is that, at least mostly, he was able to see a presentation rate that he was not able to see under normal circumstances. Maybe what we can do is try again and see if, see if you get both the numbers right this time. Again? Again. <laughs> okay. Hey, how you doing? So watch your head on the side, please. I find this result fascinating. I would have loved it if he saw both numbers exactly correctly, but this at least suggests to me that he's able to take in information faster than he was before. Six. Ninety-six. Ninety-six. True. That's what I saw. The answer is ninety-eight. Hey, that's great. So for a second time, Jesse has seen a number very similar to the one on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. These results today are very encouraging because this is the first evidence that somebody's brain can speed up and they can see the world more slowly during a high adrenaline situation. This is the first demonstration that time really can slow down. But how? Warren Mech is exploring this remarkable phenomenon by giving mind-altering drugs to rats. We're particularly interested in drugs like cocaine and marijuana because we believe they can distort time perception by compressing time or lengthening time. Hi, Ray. Is everything ready? Hi, Warren. Yes, everything's ready. Good, let's go. He's going to test whether these chemicals change the stopwatch mechanism that allows the rats to measure time. So the rats have had their drugs for about 20 minutes now. As you can see, the marijuana rat is mellowed out. The cocaine rat's gotten quite mad and is trying to escape out of this cage here. And the saline rat is just acting normally. The plan is to give the animals a timing task. The rats have previously been trained to measure time precisely. If the rat presses a lever after 12 seconds, he gets the reward of a food pellet. But if he's too early or too late, he gets nothing. The rat, given saline only, does this task perfectly and presses the lever after 12 seconds, the correct time. Next, the rat on cocaine. For this rat, time seems to zip by. It presses the lever after only eight seconds. And lastly, the rat on marijuana. Here, time seems to have ground to a halt. 
This rat doesn't press until 16 seconds have passed. So overall, we're seeing a modulation of the stopwatch where we can speed up the stopwatch and slow down the stopwatch, or we can maintain normal speed under control conditions. So it seems that our very real experience of time speeding up or slowing down can be directly influenced by chemicals. And this could account for what's happening in the free fall. Under high stress, we release adrenaline, and this, just like a drug, affects the chemical pathway of our stopwatch, slowing down time. It seems that even our sense of time passing, something that seems so much a part of the outside world, is an internal process, a fundamental part of our psychology. But not all our sense of time can come from within. As a physicist, I know that the external world dictates the way time flows. Ah, thank you. I'd like a, um, a black coffee. Black coffee, please. And that surely has to have an impact on the way we experience it. In some sense, we are prisoners of time. You can't escape it. You can't jump out of time. You can't stop time. And so then the question is, what is it? One thing we know is that time always marches forward. It never falters or freezes. These rules seem obvious. But in fact, it isn't immediately clear how or why they come about. Well, when I was learning physics for the first time, I had, I had the shock of my life when I suddenly realized that the laws of physics do allow you to go backwards in time. There's nothing in the laws of physics that says that time has to go forward. And so then the question is, why does time run forward and not backward? It is possible, technically speaking, that everything could be run in reverse. The reason we don't see time reverse in real life isn't because it's impossible, only very, very improbable. So we can't reform a broken cup, or for that matter, undo the memories of it breaking. It is so improbable that it's not going to happen in your lifetime, or for that matter, the lifetime of the universe. There's a remarkable consequence to this. The past is always fixed in our memories, and the future is yet to come. <laughs> 